Oh, the camera is fogging up again. It's already unfogged itself. What the fuck is going on? Right, we're going to carry on regardless. Yeah. My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop. And today, this is part two of this season, uh, season series about the discussion of talk. And today we're talking about, oh yes, yes, <laughs> we're talking about dinos, right. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about one dino in particular. Um, so the dino we're going to talk about is called an inertial eddy current dino. We're going to ignore the eddy current thing for a second and we're going to talk about dinos. So nine times out of ten, maybe 99.9% .9 of the time, if you've ever taken your bike to be dynoed, it will be on an inertial dyno. Um, so we need to do videos about inertial stuff, but we can still discuss it in this uh, this topic, you know, about torque. And what most of you probably won't know is that inertial dynos, so for example, a dyno jet dyno that a lot of people, the single roller, um, rolling road dynos the chassis dynos and they're called chassis dynos because the engine that you're testing can be in a chassis and then that can be tested um, as a complete package those dynos and it's not chassis fucking yanks <laughs> it's not champagne it's champagne it's chassis fucking english <laughs> even though it's french but anyway it's champagne and chassis, not champagne and chassis. Chassis. Fucking retards. Right, run over. Um, so, yes, uh, an inertial dyno. So, what the fucking hell is an inertial dyno? It's quite simply, let me get my pens out. It's quite simply a, uh, what they call a drum. It's basically a, just a roller, right? It's a roller like this with a shaft on and one at the other end you know with some floating bearings basically some bearings on either side like this right and this drum i can't remember what they're saying how big it was i think it's like 46 i think it was like 46 uh 46 centimeters i can't remember the diameter of it is yeah, it's like 50 something let's just say it's 53 i can't remember it doesn't really matter it matters to them uh, it doesn't matter in the scope of this video um, and basically this drum has a mass so we know what the mass of this drum is so we have a known mass all right and we know what this mass is so this is a defined mass we also know its diameter and stuff like that. So we know its inertia. The inertia is its resistance to accelerate, which we can call mass, right? So obviously, if you have a big roller and a little roller, even if you had the same size, so you had two rollers, one roller here, another roller here. This roller is made out of plastic. This roller is made out of cast iron. We know that the cast iron one is going to be harder to roll, right? it is going to be harder to roll. Even though they're exactly the same dimension, so aerodynamics and all that shit are taken out of it, we know that this roller will be harder to roll. And it's because it has more atoms in it. And if you want to move all of those atoms, it's going to require more energy. If you have a plastic roller, even if it's solid, there are less atoms in there. There are less protons and neutrons. The mass is lower. So it is harder to rotate the heavier mass, or it requires more energy to rotate the heavier mass than it does the lighter mass. All is good. So because they know the mass of this thing, all they need to do is they basically have a, a card, what you call a wheel card, which is just a bit like an ABS system, a traction control um, ring, where basically all it does is they have sensors, Hall effect sensors or whatever. Sometimes, I think for a lot of dinos now, they're light sensors. So it basically just bounces a laser between and then the card just cuts it on and off on and off on and off and it can count that's all it needs to do it just counts the angular velocity basically the rpm of this drum 
and because it counts how fast it's going it can have the actual velocity there and then it can also plot the acceleration from one moment to the next because the frequency of the sensor so the hertz or kilohertz it can test it can sample um, it was going this fast then it was going this fast in a millisecond so that gives you an acceleration and mass times acceleration is a force right and they know where this force is being applied so just see contact patch for your tires there don't know if you'll be able to see that you know they know at what radius this is right they know what that is now this is the thing that's going to probably blow a lot of people's minds um, is that these kind of dynos so raw inertial dynos do not measure torque right they do not measure torque if you don't believe me here's a video from dino jet differently it's going to give you an accurate measurement based off of the acceleration rate hang on let's take a look at this all right so what is actually being measured by the dyno well what happens at the dynamometer is we measure force mass times acceleration then we need to know distance to calculate how much work is actually being done but then you have this simple math to get our torque and power members horsepower equals torque times rpm divided by 5252 but all this is being already done for you in the software and hardware of the dynamometer so there's no real reason for anybody to have to know this. Yeah, well, forget about it. Back to the dyno. So in that, like he says, it measures force. It knows how much this is spinning. It knows the mass. So the knowns here is known mass. It also is a known velocity. Velocity. That's weird when I look at it this way. And we also know from that, the difference of that we also know the acceleration acceleration i'm trying to get the pen the right way around so you can see it right so we know all of these right so from that we can basically work out how much energy it takes to accelerate this thing that's what matters and if you know what that is or you know the force whichever way you want to go around you know how much it takes to rotate this drum. So basically, these kind of dynos, they measure, uh, they measure power. They measure how much uh, it takes to rotate this drum at said velocity, at said angular acceleration, stuff like that. These dynos do not directly measure torque. Now, we are ignoring pony brakes and stuff like that. These are things that m most people just don't use anymore. Um, but torque is not measured. Torque is calculated. Here's a... Um, a this is the installation instruction for a Dynajet dyno. And it says that you have to attach either to an OBD2 or a CAN bus, or whatever you want, whatever flavour of whatever, or you put pickup sensors, induction pickup coils, on the spark plug leads, and then that counts the RPM from the actual engine. Right? So the dyno is measuring power output. That's all it's measuring. And what it's doing is it's measuring the power output let me get my pens again. It's measuring the power. Fucking camera fogging up. <laughs> so we are measuring, measuring power output. If we then take the engine RPM, the engine RPM, and we plug this into this, we can do the whole horsepower trick of our uh, RPM, and we can divide that by our power, really it's power RPM, whichever way you want to write it, power RPM, RPM power, and then what you should be left with is your torque. Right? So, let's just say We've got an engine that produces 200, 200 horsepower at 10,000 RPM. 
So 10,000 RPM divided by 200 horsepower, and that will give us 50, right? 50 newton meters of torque. Well, not newton meters, there's the conversion. 50 uh, foot pounds, pounds feet, will get into that SAE bunch of twats. <laughs> but you get what I mean? Um, you know, that's basically all you. Sorry, I'm fucking phone. Oh, no, not my good pens. Is that a good pen? Good pen. Drag strip chassis preparation. Or lower that, lower the chassis. Dynamics, chassis and all that. Fuck off. So you can see in this um, uh, clip, uh, snippet from the manual, it says that you have to attach the RPM lead. Either you plug it straight in directly or you snap it onto the induction part of your ignition wires, your HT leads and stuff, and you have to get the firing order right and blah, blah, blah. But basically, it just does this calculation inside the software to give you torque, right? So this is what's very important. <coughs> we are reading, that's what I should put. We are reading, sensing, whatever you want to call it, or sensing, sensing, like a weird X-Men man, whatever you want to call them. So we are sensing or reading engine RPM, and we are basically... Um, dividing that by our power that we are recording at the inertial dyno and then we're getting torque out of that the eddy current side of things is like when you have a um, multipole magnet um, oh, multipole uh, fucking electric motor and you turn it you can feel it notch like a stepper motor the basically the coils just apply a resistance to this drum spinning which we call load so you can simulate real conditions because apart from the inertial side of the dyno, you know, um, we can't put any more load on that. You'd have to have bigger and bigger and heavier and heavier drums, where instead we can, not artificially, we can control the load that's put on the dyno. You can also use the eddy current dyno to slow it down. A lot of most dynos, though, have brakes, you know, literally a physical brake disc and that kind of thing. But regardless, the big thing I want to get across here is that torque is not directly measured it is calculated and there's some weird nuances about what um about what can actually the reality of the situation about what's going on and the reason why dinos calculate power you might think well why can't you just do it the drum because your rear wheel torque is not just say you've got a a thousand cc fucking what have you that has about a hundred newton meters of torque um that is not the torque at the rear wheel it is much much higher you know it is basically proportional it is equivalent to the force that's pushing you across the floor a hundred newton meters of torque holy shit where's it gone this fucking drill this drill with my brush on it this drill here produces i think the manufacturer said something like uh what's it say here? Oh, it doesn't actually say on the bottom it just says 1500 1550 rpm um but this drill here produces 32 newton meters of torque shit that's way more than isaac's you attach this to isaac's rear wheel and try and do the speeds he does the torque at the rear wheel is not <laughs> um the torque of the engine and this is why uh, engine RPM is required. Not the RPM of the drum, that's how you calculate power. The engine RPM. If we can get the power and the RPM, then we can work out the torque. So every time you see a torque graph, a torque curve on a graph, that is calculated from that power curve. And that's why everything lines up great. You can see a little dip in the power, you can see a dip in the torque, you see some dip in the torque, you can see some dip in the power. So, yeah, it's not really that massively important. It's just getting across the point that that torque is, you know, there were people saying stuff like, oh, it's the average. Well, no, it's the calculated. And that calculation, um, in a sense, shows you exactly at the RPM what force is being applied because force and all the rest of it is the next episode of this little series. I hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.
and the fucking camera is doing my nutting. It cleared up. Bastard.